welcome back to another Sims 3 speed build. Uh, today we are working on the colonial house that I had uh, told you guys about in other videos. And I ended up calling it Winslow Colonial. Um, I really had no idea what to call this house. So I just kind of picked a name you know, that was used quite often in the colonial times. And Winslow just happened to be a name that, I mean, it sounds like a family name, so kind of like maybe this is a family's uh, colonial. Um, it is rather big. Uh, I was going to make this a garage here, but, and for a while that's actually what it ended up being. Uh, it started out being a garage, but ends up, this house ends up being a, I guess you can call them a split level, because it will actually, it drops down into this room, and uh, it ends up becoming a family room is what it ends up being. Uh, this little corner piece is actually lucky it even got into this build because the roofing of that angle piece proved to be a little bit of a challenge. So, But this house is actually in two parts. Um, this took me quite a while to do. The build wasn't too bad itself. Um, we get actually most of the build and probably most of the decor or maybe part of the decorating a quarter of it to a half or something like that um, I end up moving the lot again from this lot because the mountains um, just started causing problems again um, when I first started building it was fine no problem whatsoever and then when I started going a little bit farther into build that's when they started for whatever reason it lags so um, I think I'm just going to stop building over in this section. Um, I really like this lot, but I think from now on I'm just going to start building you know, somewhere else. Now the screenshots I took, of course, I put it back on this lot uh, for the screenshots. That way you know, the screenshots look a little bit nicer. Uh, but as you can see here, I'm having that struggle with the roofing because trying to connect the diagonal portion to the other part of the house and have it look right like it's supposed to be there was quite a bit of a struggle so I actually got to a point where I was about ready actually just to scratch the idea all together uh, but we we do eventually get it figured out I probably spend more time on the roof of this portion probably than any other portion of the house actually um, but I did you know while I was decorating you know I was building this house you know it's going really good and I uh, had no problems and then I started decorating it and that's when I started falling into a little bit of what I call the creator's uh, block. I just was not coming up with hardly any ideas at the time to decorate and the fact that that happened to happen on a large build just made that that much worse. Um, it just, I really didn't want to come back to it. I really didn't. But I really wanted to make a colonial style home. I had been thinking about making one for quite some time. And I wanted to use the pillars. And I wanted it just to be a grand house. And this house definitely is. Um, I did use some store content. Uh, and the reason why I used the store content was because... I wanted the furnishings of this house to be just as grand as the outside of the house. Um, this is definitely a large house. It's four bedrooms, four bathrooms, and with it fully decorated and placed on a lot, you're looking at about 227,000 simoleons. So it's quite an expensive house, and I wanted it to look that way. So. Um, this time, I mean, I try not to use too much store content because I know not everybody has it. But in this case, because of the type of house I was creating, I wanted it to look just as nice on the in, you know, inside as what it looks like it would be. Um, this house definitely looks like it would be furnished quite nicely. Uh, so I did my best to try to furnish it as nice as I can. Um, all kinds of rooms in this house like right there I'm putting on but I'm going to end up having like a sunroom or a garden room that little like add-on that we just did and then it has a really good size attic uh, I originally was going to leave it go and not do anything with the attic space and then I ended up creating a little bit of a game room in it 
and there is some attic space that is left empty. I didn't do anything with it. Um, I know some people like to clutter up the attic and you know make it look like an attic, but I normally don't. I don't normally mess too much with attic spaces, so um, not unless I really have a reason for it. Uh, otherwise, normally I don't really mess with them too much. So, um, but anyway. Uh, but we're just trying going through and doing a little bit of the coloring. The brick does not stay. It ends up getting changed to a different kind of brick. So um, it ends up being kind of like a, I think it's a pale yellow color is what I end up choosing. It does kind of look greenish currently, but I'm pretty sure it's a yellow. Some kind of like a yellow anyway. It does look nice. Um, so just going through and doing some more of that. and. At this time, I still hadn't, you know, changed the garage. I can't remember why I had chose to do this, because um, I did start building this house actually quite a long time ago. If you remember, it was about three weeks before, or three weeks uh, that I didn't have any speed builds, and I had actually started this house probably a month before that. So <laughs> I just finished this house actually decorating it a couple of days ago and I thought this would be um, the house that will go ahead and you know get the commentary taken care of and get that put on and it is a two-part normally I will post a two-part usually within a couple hours maybe within a day of each other so I definitely look forward to that. All the download links for this house will be in part two. So be sure to check out part two as well so you can get the download links. And I will have that in the link below when that one is uploaded. So as soon as it gets uploaded, I will have it. I'll have the download link in the description or the video two, part two in the description for you. So um, as you can see, we have moved to a different lot. Um, this is the large lot of Luna Island. I normally just kind of delete the usual 64 by 64 and I just kind of build here. Um, a lot of my speed builds are you know usually in this location just because the world loads up quickly and um, I don't have to wait you know a long time for it to load up and it doesn't normally give me too many problems so uh, now if I decide or plan on using a specific you know a lot for a specific world and of course it gets built there but usually most of my houses that can go pretty much anywhere you choose will for the most part be you know just kind of placed wherever and that's where usually where I build them so here I'm just trying to see if I can find a window that I could put there you know I it would be so nice if we could you know it would definitely be nice to be able to move windows up and down like in The Sims 4. So, but unfortunately, we cannot do that. Um, I just now noticed the reason why I decided to remove the garage altogether was because the garage door was glitching out. It looks like that's yeah. I think that's pretty much why I wasn't happy with it. It didn't. I just did not like it. I chose not to. Um, so it kind of looks like a room that probably at one time was a garage and the people who of course who had the house converted the garage to a living space so um, we have in this house you actually have a formal living room so there's no TV in that living room and then this would be more like the family room it's off the kitchen um, and then of course the garden room has a TV as well I did not put any expensive TVs in this time, no big flat screens or anything like that. It just didn't seem to fit the room, I guess you could say. Um, but here's that's the garden room that we just did the windows in. And I always hate doing windows because I can never <laughs> figure out what windows that I want. So I always struggle trying to find the kind of windows that I think look nice and always wonder. Sometimes I even kind of sit there and look at them, you know, off, re you know, not recording and I'll just kind of look at them and wonder, you know, do those look good or not and, uh, and things like that. But I happened to realize after I had finished all the furnishings that I had never put a door going out to any of the balconies. <laughs> I had realized that after I was done and I really didn't want to go in and change everything. 
Uh, so currently, as is, the upper balconies the Sims cannot get to, but it wouldn't be all that difficult, you know, to add a add a door or something for them to use it. So uh, anyway, we do a little bit of the landscaping. Uh, here I am just putting the stairs in, um, lots of stairs. Now, I didn't do anything with the backyard because as you can see the house pretty m goes right up just about to the end of the property so if you're wanting to do extra things with the yard, you know gardens and pools and play areas and things like that I would probably suggest putting it on a bigger lot than what it is because it goes right, this house takes up pretty much the entire lot. I pretty much used everything I could use. So, um, yeah, if you want to, yeah, I didn't do anything so much with the backyard. So, mostly because there just wasn't any room and I didn't really, I mean, at the time I was thinking, you know, I would connect all of these stairs with sidewalks of some sort and things like that. But when I actually got down to actually decorating it or, you know, doing the backyard and the side yards and stuff, it just didn't seem I just wasn't coming up with anything, anything for that because of it being so small so um we do have you know quite a bit of landscaping done in the front yard it's definitely full of lush plants and uh, you know and sidewalks and things like that and gardens so that is definitely you know taken care of for you and I always forget when I'm working with pillars and stuff that you can't put the railing on if the pillar's there so or the column pillar column whatever it is you say um I always forget <laughs> so that's why you see that I'm always constantly removing the pillars and putting them back in and I'm rather picky about things I when they snap in they actually uh come through the uh roof as you can see um a little glimpse of it here and there I I personally would not be able to have the house look like that. I have to, you know, manually put them in and put them exactly where I want them because for me that would just look a little tacky or maybe, you know, sloppy and unfinished and I just wouldn't be able to do that. So um they, you know, I take the time to make sure they're in just right so we don't see them. So we're doing a little bit of landscaping now. I believe I do a little bit more again at the end of the video so what you see here is not the finished product of the landscaping so I try to use all kinds of plants just trying to throw them in wherever I could think um, I always find the ones with the flowers to look best uh, I haven't been able to master putting on plants that don't have flowers and get them to look good <laughs> That doesn't always work out for me, so I am still working on that, but right now all my plants usually have flowers, so I tried putting, you know, ornamental trees and decorative trees, you know, some smaller ones around the house to add some more color and, and everything else, so, um, but we're just going through and doing, you know, the landscaping, and it's a little bit, a little tedious, you know, tedious work, so but it's got to get done. Nobody wants to, I mean at least I don't anyway. I hate doing landscaping. I don't want to, you know, download a house and doesn't have any landscaping because I personally don't like doing it. <laughs> I just, I don't find it, I don't know, I just, I don't find myself very good at the landscaping whatsoever so I don't like doing it. So I try in my houses, at least I try anyway, I try to get the you know your plants and everything in there for you that way you don't have to do it because I'm sure I'm not the only one that hates landscaping so <laughs> I like it when I can find somebody else who you know does nice houses and they do really good landscaping and I have no problem changing interiors you know to fit what I you know what I want in the house but I like it when the landscaping is already done so here I was just trying to add, I don't know what that plant is, it's some kind of evergreen thing or whatever. I thought it kind of helped die down a little bit of the bright colors from the plants, from the flowers and everything. I just thought it would help, you know, make it look more, I don't know, more lush and green and I thought it looked much nicer. So they're mostly just in there just to kind of add, you know, a little bit of a change, a little bit different texture to the plants. So. 
Here we're adding some of the trees and I uh, figured this house just seemed like a house that would look like it was a little bit more established you know with the trees and everything being a little bit bigger and you know lots of them and usually trees I sometimes watch some people I mean I try to put you know trees in places where I think they would look good and I know a lot of other people do too however if you ever look at other houses I was actually looking at other houses one day you know they're driving around town and stuff like that and trees really are just kind of placed wherever so um, I don't think anybody actually puts too much thought when they're planting you know a pine tree or uh, an, an oak tree or something like that so uh, here we're going in and doing the land, uh, the interior so just you know trying to figure out I really don't like it when plants are poking through the wall I'll either ignore them and then cover it up with furnishings that way you can't see it or I just go and I move them all together so I had a little bit of an idea of how I wanted this house to look um, I you know had kind of an idea uh, a little bit here that we're doing um, you know I didn't have too much trouble then I ended up having to you know stop the um, you know my video and everything because I couldn't really come up with how I wanted it to look and I thought I wanted a chimney there and and then I end up getting rid of it. I didn't like it. I didn't like the location of the chimney. I didn't like how it looked on the outside. So we end up just getting rid of it. So that ends up not being the formal room anyway. So, uh, but yeah, I, I spent a little bit of time trying to make this chimney look nice, but it just, I didn't like the location of it at all. So we end up getting rid of it. It doesn't stick around. So. Uh, don't worry about that. If you like that fireplace, I'm sorry. If you thought the chimney looked good, I'm sorry, but it doesn't stay. So, so you can see I have already removed it. So, um, but there's plenty of plenty of things for your Sims to do. At least I think there is. I tend to forget to put some of those activities and stuff in when I'm decorating. Um, I just don't think of them. I know some people they throw in chess tables and you know easels and stuff and it's so easy to remember but I always forget so I don't know I just, just always forget so I thought maybe we would do a little bit of a hallway there but as you can see that didn't look very good um but right when you walk in there on the right is going to be the office and then there's going to be a bathroom um next to the staircase is what that is just a little bathroom downstairs I think that's the only bathroom downstairs so Hopefully, I mean, there's, you know, more bathrooms throughout the house. Like I said, there's a total of four of them, but only one downstairs. So, um, I've played with large families before, and I, I personally don't normally have too much trouble getting my Sims to use the bathroom, you know, when there's only a couple and lots of Sims. So, um, I normally can, you know, get them to work, but... I thought I wanted to do like a marble in this entryway like I said this to me needed to be a house that was really grand and um, I just felt that a marble floor when you first walked in just kind of seemed to be the you know the style that I wanted and I end up using kind of like a cream color uh, wood trim throughout the house um, again it's not normally a color that I use but in this house for some reason it just seemed to work I really liked it better with the white and um, it just I don't know with the marble it didn't look as good having a brownish colored trim so that's why we end up going with white so I do spend you know usually quite a bit of time trying to decide what colors and patterns and stuff that I want and you know that usually that usually takes me a little bit of time so and then of course you can't put flooring in where those pillars are those columns so again they you know they had to be removed again I was starting to get tired of removing columns it seemed like that's all I was doing was removing columns and putting them back in <laughs> so but you know just trying to put everything in trying to make sure there's a roof on everything and black out all the things that you know your places your sims cannot go um, I like doing that it just helps direct your eyes to the locations that the sims can go instead of you know 
wandering in somewhere else. So, um, just, you know, finishing up those little touches and getting the columns put back. And at this time, I wasn't quite as picky putting them columns in because I figured, knowing my luck, I'd have to move the darn things again. So, <laughs> I just kind of threw them in this time and think, you know, thinking that I was probably going to have to move them again. But I don't think I do. Um, they do come through the wall in certain corners. And I really didn't want to have to move them because I like the way they look. I like how they sit right next to the house on the corner. So I end up just putting a bookshelf on the on a diagonal to help cover up, you know, where the pillar is. Um, I hope you don't mind because, like I said, it does kind of stick through. And I apologize. Normally, like right there, you can see a little bit of the pillar coming through on the floor. Normally, I don't have things like that in my builds. But I really felt that I wanted the pillar to be there. So I tried my best, you know, just to kind of cover it up with some kind of object. So, and I know that's a dresser. So, <laughs> um, if you might be wondering, you know, why are you putting a dresser there? Well, I was mostly using it kind of like a side table. It was such a nice dresser and it really actually looks like it would work really nicely for, you know, like a side table. However, you can't, you can't put nothing on it. So, not any, not like I like to anyway. So that's why I have different shelves and different, um, you know, the other side table and stuff there, and merging things in there just so I can maybe clutter up the uh, that dresser a little bit more. So, you know, if you download the house and you move thing, you know, you wonder how did I get that many things on a dresser? Well. It's because I actually, I don't have it on the dresser, I have it on something else. So, I know I had downloaded um, a few houses once before, and, and I uh, had no idea how they had done it. In fact, what they had was a bookshelf in the house, and it was all full of stuff on top of it. I thought, oh, that looks so nice, that makes it so, look more lived in, and warm and cozy, and... You know, I searched all over online trying to find how in the world they put stuff on top of a bookshelf, and I couldn't find it anywhere. <laughs> um, I later just discovered putting things, you know, that using the shelf and doing it, and I'm going to assume, I don't have that house downloaded anymore, so I can't double check, but I'm going to assume that's how they did it. They must have put shelves or something and used and cluttered up the shelves and stuff and made it look like the bookshelf was so um, I just kind of you know happened to stumble upon it. it you know it wasn't my original idea I really can't tell you where I seen it it wasn't in the video or anything like that I just um, you know happened to see somebody else had done it so here's this um, you know the half bath I was telling you about it's right off of the the entrance way there. Um, at least I'm pretty sure that's the way it stays. I tend to change sometimes my houses the way they're set up, and but I'm pretty sure it stays that way where it uh, you enter it from the entrance. So, uh, but anyway, uh, like I said, we get quite a bit of the landscaping done. Or not landscaping. I apologize. <laughs> I don't know where my mind was just a few seconds ago. Um, we get most a lot of the interior done. So uh, the one of the things I hate about doing split levels, I know some people don't mind it because that's just the way the game is, and there's nothing you can do about it. But I hate how the lighting looks horrible whenever you do split levels, and that the walls look just downright terrible whenever you do them. Um, but we end up getting it pretty, I, I think anyway, it looks pretty decent. Um, I don't like using those invisible lights from By the Bug all that much because I've actually had them where they don't come on when the sim enters the room, but occasionally you just have to use them. You know, like when you do a split level or an open balcony, for instance, um, sometimes you just need to use them that way the lighting looks more correct but here is just like the family room like I was saying and that those couches are store content um, I love them couches I don't I don't know what it is about those couches but they look so comfortable and they got the 
the blanket over the armchair and I just love them. Now this table, this octagon table, I actually seen uh, some Tastic Builder do it one time and I thought, oh that table is so awesome and I loved it and every now and then I put that table in, you know, in my builds because I just think it looks so cool. I love it. So, but that, I do actually remember where I seen that one. I seen that from some Tastic Builder. So, if anybody knows who that is, uh, he does some really good builds too. So, um, but now we're just trying to decide. I do end up changing the wall where the window is, uh, where we were originally going to have the garage door. I end up changing it that way it looks nicer so we don't have quite as much. Um, like right here I think is where I just changed it. Yes, that way it doesn't look quite so weird lighting wise. Um, I Like I said, I hate, I absolutely hate that. I love how we have, you know, the train tools and we can change wall heights and do all kinds of things, but the lighting really could have been worked on. It really could have. Uh, but it actually looks pretty nice. Like I said, I put those invisible lights and stuff in there. We do have other lights and stuff that help brighten up the room. But it still needed a little bit more. Like right here is where I put them in. It just needed a little bit more. And normally I position them and change intensity and do whatever I can to get their lighting to make whatever it is I'm trying to light up look as close to the rest of the room as I possibly can because that for me really bugs me. <laughs> I just does. Uh, so I mean I try my best not to have weird lighting. I really do. Um, I try to get you know the houses to look as nice as I can and and everything like that and most of the time I succeed but there's been a few times that the lighting still just kind of sucked and there wasn't anything I could really do about it so um, like right here we still have a little bit of a lighting issue wasn't looking quite as bright you know nice as the down you know, like when you are in the lower portion so I added a few more of those invisible lights. They will disappear when you're in live mode and just to try to make it look a little bit a little bit more natural, I guess, a little bit nicer. So sometimes when you do these split levels, it actually can cause like a really weird shadow. I haven't fully figured out the shadow. Um sometimes you get it and sometimes you don't. So um, and when you do have that sh weird shadow, I haven't found any way to get rid of it. So, um, as of right now, I have no idea. Um, other than just do your best to try to, you know, do lighting as much as you can, I guess. So, we kind of went with like a, as you can see, like kind of like an orange theme in this room. Um, orange is definitely not a color I normally use. Mostly because I have a hard time getting an orange color that I actually think looks nice. <laughs> I always think the orange looks kind of crappy. But I happened to get one that I actually kind of liked and kept. And um, I think it looks good in that room. So here we are working on the kitchen. That's going to be kind of like a buffet area. Well, not, I mean, not like a buffet where you can um, get food or anything. But like a china cabinet area or something. I like using those cabinets from that you get in the bathrooms. They seem they merge really good into counters and can make nice, you know, like pieces for your, you know, for the houses and stuff. So I like using those. Um, as you can see, a little bit more of the pillar, as you can see, is, is starting is coming through again. That's another thing that you're going to see um, downstairs. There's a little bit of it coming through right there. And what I did to kind of cover it up as you can see is I used one of those bathroom uh, cabinet things again just it kind of looks like um I think they're called appliance garages um, I didn't know that's what they were called I always I don't know what they were what I thought they were but I didn't I never gave it a thought that that was what it would be called but they're in the corner and that's where you put all your appliances like your mixer and um, blenders and everything else so um, that's kind of what I you know why I put that there that's kind of what it looks like so it looks like an appliance garage so 
and that helped cover up that that uh, column so I was happy with that uh, this room I think ends up going kind of um, like a yellow theme I think and here we're just putting some under-the-counter lighting I like doing this because sometimes the lighting glitches out again and doesn't light the counter area very good so but again which was happening if I remember correctly I could not get those tiles to look right no matter what I did they always looked a little weird I don't know um, every now and then you just have this lighting that just doesn't want to work for you at all so um, I can't remember if I keep that shelf there or not I think I do I was kind of using it as um, kind of like you know how you have a, a single light or whatever you know above the sink only to kind of give you extra lighting when you're doing dishes so I'm pretty sure it stays um, and here I wanted an island and I wanted the you know your oven to be in it and uh, so just kind of you know doing you know an island with an oven I like doing that once in a while the kitchen's nice and big that helps take up some of the space so this kitchen is definitely a good size definitely so and of course here we're just loading up a shelf like I was telling you before you load it up somewhere else and then you merge it into whatever object it is that you want to put stuff on um, and then I went and got a second shelf as you could see so I could put something in the center too so that's how you do that if you're ever wondering how you know how to do that you just use shelves that's what I do so I'm uh, just going through and doing a little bit more. Um, normally I have more walls and lighting done by now. For whatever reason this was just taking a little bit. Um, but it ends up being uh, kind of like a, like I said, I couldn't get these tiles. Look how dark they are. They're so dark. I don't know. I, I mean I even put the lighting under there and it didn't even help. Those tiles, oh they were making me so mad. Um, it ends up being kind of like a yellowish color, but the walls are kind of pink, I think. I think they are. Um, I, yeah, I don't know. Um, I can't even remember. I just got done taking the screenshots, and I can't even tell you the colors of the floor. Or the, I know it gets changed a lot because I was having so much trouble with the darn, those darn tiles. Oh my goodness. <laughs> But anyway, here we are just looking for a mirror that I could fit in there, um, you know, just to kind of make it look a little nicer. And for whatever reason, my plant late, lately that has the uh, glass vase and it's a yellow flower that comes out of it, for, I don't know what's going on. For some reason, the flower's missing. It's not there. I don't know. I have no idea what's going on. So, so as you can see, here I am. I'm loading up shelves again. <laughs> you know just so I can put things on the counter in a different location because you know you can't obviously put anything on the corner or the crack of the counter so but uh, it looks like I did it looks like it. it looks nice so just trying to figure out what all I can do this kitchen ended up being so big a lot bigger than I planned uh, but we do get it taken care of. We do get it filled up. Um, I had, I did struggle a little bit trying to figure out how to furnish some of these rooms. Some of these rooms are just were really big, and I didn't really know what to do with them. I don't normally do large houses very often, so. Um, but this video pretty much is going to end with finishing this kitchen. We're going to do the little kitchen nook here pretty soon, and you'll see how I cover up that pillar again with a bookshelf. So. I'm going to go ahead and leave you to the rest of the video. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed. Have a great day. Bye. Mm -hmm.